Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a quadratic equation, um, solve a quadratic equation by using the quadratic formula. So what I did is I did a nice little um, coloring scheme. And it takes me a while, so I didn't even do the discriminant like that. Um, but basically, the main important thing I want you to do in solving a quadratic equation, obviously, the best way to be able to look at this is to by using um, factoring. However, if you can't solve a quadratic equation by factoring, then we can always use the quadratic formula, where the solutions, what the values of x when the equation is equal to 0, um, are going to be by using this formula. Now, the way I get a, b, and c from is from the quadratic equation when it's set equal to 0, a, b, and c. So the main important thing, the thing that I want you to understand the most is the quadratic formula works when your quadratic equation is set equal to 0. So for this example, you can see it's not set equal to 0. So the first thing we're going to want to do is add a 6x on the both sides and add a 1 on the both sides. Therefore, I have the equation 9x squared plus 6x plus 1 equals 0. Then the next thing I like to do is to identify what is your a, b, and your c. Remember, a is going to be your coefficient of your quadratic term, b is your coefficient of your linear term, and c is, the, um, is your uh, value of your constant. So a in this case is 9, b in this case is c, 6, and c is going to be equal to 1. Now, the next, thing we, the next thing I think is very helpful is rather than plugging in everything into this formula, let's figure out what the discriminant is first. Because the discriminant is all the values that are under the square root. And knowing what type of number that is can be very, very helpful. If that number is 0, then that tells us we're just going to have one, um, one solution. If that number is a rational number, a rash, real rational number, therefore then we know that there's going to be two um, two possible rational zero, or if, I'm sorry, if that number is a square number, then we'll have two rational real solutions. If that number is a non-square number, like a square number would be 9, a non-square number would be 5. If it's a non-square number, then we're going to have two real irrational solutions. And if that number is negative, then we're going to have two imaginary or complex solutions. So I always like to go ahead and figure out the discriminant first. And by doing the discriminant, now that's not part of this problem, but there are questions you know, that ask, what are the types of solutions? So I'm not going to write it down, because that's not really what we're doing. Um, but I will um, describe what the solution is. OK, so therefore I have 36 minus 4 times 9, which is 36. So that equals the square root of 0, which is equal to 0. So since we have a vector 0, we're going to have one real solution. Okay. Now let's see what that happens. Let's see how that works. Let's just pretend that 0, square root of 0, let's plug that back in with the rest of the equation. So my solutions are going to be x equals opposite of b. So b in this case is 6, right? It's not negative 6. Um, I'm sorry, it's not negative 6 from here, but b is actually 6 when I get it set equal to 0. So the opposite of b is negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0, which we know is 0, but I'll just write it in there, divided by 2 times a, which in this case is 9. So negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0, that's just going to equal x equals negative 6 plus or minus 0, so it's going to be negative 6, over 2 times there is going to be 18. And therefore, that equals a negative 1 third. So therefore, my one solution, the value where the graph crosses the x-axis, is going to be negative 1 third. In the next example over here, uh, we're going to do the exact same case here. First thing we need to do is identify our a, b, and our c. a in this case is 1, b in this case is 4, and c in this case is going to be a negative 3. Again, let's determine the discriminant first. So the discriminant is going to be the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. So therefore, um, in this case, I'm going to have 16 minus, uh, or negative 4 times negative 3 times 1 is going to be a positive 12. So the discriminant equals the square root of 16 plus 12 is going to be 28. We can break apart the square root of 28 into the square root of 4 times 7, which is equal to 2 square root of 7. Now, 28 is not a square number, you can see. So therefore, our solutions are going to be two real irrational solutions. So now, let's go and find the solutions here. So I have opposite of b, so it's going to be negative 4, plus or minus my discriminant here, which is 2 square root of 7, divided by 2 times a, which is 1. Right? So that's 2 times 1 is just 2. Now I see I can divide this 2 into my negative 4 and divide the 2 into the 2 square root of 7. So my final answer is 
negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. Because that 2 divides into both of them. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 1 times square root of 7. Okay? So it's really helpful to determine what the discriminant is. Not only does that tell you what type of solutions you have, but it also lightens up your workload. Okay, in this example, you can see that obviously my equation is not set equal to 0. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to add a 3 to both sides. So therefore, I have 6x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. Now I can say that a equals 6, b equals negative 8, and c equals 3. Now I'll determine my discriminant first. So I do square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, so 8, um, eight squared is going to leave me with a 64. Minus 4 times 6 is going to be 24. Times 3 is going to be times 3, 24, 48. That's going to be a 62. Right? 24 times 3, 24, 48. No, that's going to be 72. Two, four, four, eight, twelve. Two, four, six, seventy-two. So that's going to be seventy-two. So now, when I go ahead and simplify that, that gives me the square root of negative eight. So therefore, since I'm taking the square root of a negative number, I'm going to now have two complex solutions. Meaning, the graph is actually not going to cross the y in y axis at any real values. Um, however, I still can simplify this. I can break this down. Let's do that over here. I can break this down, though, however, to 4 times 2 times negative 1. Well, the square root of 4 is going to be 2 times the square root of 2. And the square root of negative 1 is i. In case you're used to using your imaginary units. If not, you can just say no real solutions. So let's go ahead and figure out, though, what these complex solutions are. So opposite of 8, now in this case, my 8 is negative. So now it's going to be positive 8 plus or minus my new discriminant, which is 2 times the square root of 2, i all over 2 times a, which is 12. 2 times a, which is 6. Okay, So that's going to be 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 2 i all over 12. Now you can see out of all of these, I can factor out a 2. Or I can divide out a 2 here. 2 over 12 is 1 sixth. And therefore, 2, that would be a 4. So my final answer is going to be 4 plus or minus the square root of 2, i, divided by 6. Okay. Or if you're not used to i and you're like, what the heck is i? You would just say no real solutions. All right, last one we're going to get into. Uh, here I have 5 times x squared plus 2x plus 5. So in this case, um, again, we're going to identify a equals 5, b equals 2, c equals 5. And determine my discriminant here. I'm going to do b squared. So it's going to be 2 squared minus 4 times a times c. So that's going to be 4. What's this discriminant? Um, actually, you know what? I don't want to do that. Let me change this problem. Um, let's see here. I am going to do. x squared minus um, 4 times a times c. So that's going to be 4. Four times a, 1 times c, 4x plus 2. Oh, 4x plus, um, plus 5 equals 0. OK, so let's go ahead and do this one here in case. Sorry, I want to do a change. I want to give you one example of, a, of one solution when you have irrational, when you have complex, and then one where you're going to have two rational. So again, let's do this one. a equals 1, b equals negative 4, c equals 5. The discriminant here is going to be the square root of negative 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5. b squared minus 4 times a times c. Those aren't going to be 
negative 5. Oh, that should be a negative. That's right. I did my math wrong. That should be a negative 5 times negative 5. Sorry about that. The problem is x squared minus 4x minus 5. I was doing my factoring in my head wrong. OK, so therefore, I now have the square root of 16. And then negative 4 times negative 5 is going to be a positive 20, which equals the square root of 36, which equals 6. Now, to solve the rest of it, x equals opposite of b, which is going to be 4, plus or minus, thir uh, plus or minus 6, which is my discriminant, all over 2 times a, which is just 2. So now I can do 4 plus 6, which is 10. 10 divided by 2 is going to equal 5. And then 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, divided by 2 is negative 1. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Thanks.